Hello tech world, this is Tech Thoughts. In this video, I'll be demoing how to interact with the ILO API using PowerShell. And for those of you out there in tech world that have HP servers in your environment, you're most likely familiar with ILO as the remote server management platform that you can use to manage your HP servers when you're not physically in front of the machine. So we have an ILO console open here, and we can see that we can do things like turn off the machine, recycle it, just as if we were there pushing the buttons on the physical chassis itself. We can also launch a remote console and actually pull up like we have a monitor plugged directly into that physical chassis. We can get a lot of information and logging off of the chassis as well. So ILO is a great way to manage a physical chassis when you're not actually physically in front of the machine, giving you a lot of flexibility as a systems administrator. If your HP servers in your environment are also Gen 9 and happen to be running ILO 4 version 2.0 or higher, they also support an ILO REST API. This means that all the functionality that you get through the regular ILO consoles that you're probably used to using can also be performed via PowerShell by engaging that API. This is a great feature set that HP offers and can really give you a lot of power and flexibility in your environment for performing a wide range of tasks against your servers very quickly. Some potential use cases uh, could be that you could audit the BIOS settings of every HP in your environment to make sure that all the BIOS settings are configured the way that you expect them to be. You could update the administrator BIOS password for every device in your environment in a couple of seconds rather than visiting each machine. Or if you were spinning up new HP Gen 9 servers, you could push a pre-configured BIOS configuration to each of those new devices without having to go manually set those BIOS settings yourself. So on this topic, you're definitely going to want to check out the corresponding techthoughts.info blog as it contains several examples as well as some links to the API documentation that you're definitely going to want to take a look at. So I've linked to that Tech Thoughts right up in the description below, so make sure to check that out. All right, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hop over to the Tech Thoughts GitHub. And if you're not familiar with the GitHub, it's not a huge deal that you know how to interact with this at all. You just need to click on the ILO REST API. And once you have the ILO REST API, there's some documentation here on how to actually engage this uh, uh, script example. And one of the nice things about GitHub is that you can just click on the PS1 uh, file itself and when you do that, you get the option to click on raw. And when you do that, you get access to the raw code that's inside that script. So you can just copy this and we can get that into a ISC window on your device. And now we have that code that you just pulled off of the Tech Thoughts GitHub and is ready to be used. So what I've gone ahead and done here is just provided some very basic examples on creating a new HP session so you can authenticate against your ILO and establish a session to it uh, to interact with the API. I've also got a remove HP session so you can clean up that session after you're done using it. And then if we hop back over to the documentation on this GitHub page, you also see I provided some base examples on how to do things like get the basic HP BIOS settings and to perform a couple test calls. So definitely check out this as well as the Tech Thoughts write-up uh, for some more specifics. And I'll go ahead and just briefly demo a couple of these to give you an idea of some of the capabilities of interacting with this API. So let's go ahead and load this uh, script up into memory, which is going to give us access to these uh, session functions as well as some of these BIOS-based functions. And I'll go ahead and open up a new ISC tab. And I'll copy in a couple of key components that we're going to need. This may look a little complicated to you, but it's actually pretty straightforward and simple. We're going to need to declare the IP of the ILO that we're going to be connecting to. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just whatever the IP is of the ILO device that you're going to be connected to. This whole section right here is just going to be establishing our credentials by using git credential. If you don't want to use git credential, that's fine. You can just manually specify your username and password in the script. And then we're going to create our first session and load that into a session variable. So we can see here that we're going to be engaging the new HP session function that I've created for you. Uh, declaring that against the IP, the username, and the password to establish that session for us. All right, so let's just do uh, up to this point right here. So we'll just highlight this code, and you can click F8 or just run the selection. And I'll go ahead and do that now, and it's going to prompt me for some creds since I'm using uh, Git Credential. Okay, so depending on the access uh, that you have on your workstation, your workstation may not be configured to trust the certificate of the ILO session that you're establishing. So you can see here that uh, in the script that I've developed on the Tech Thoughts GitHub, that I've accounted for that situation, and it'll prompt you and say, hey, the underlying connection was closed, could not establish a trust relationship for this SSL. So you may not uh, trust this particular certificate for your ILO session, 
As you can see here in my Chrome browser, uh, this is not trusted. And if you just wanna temporarily ignore this, the script can account for that. And it'll say, would you like to temp disable certificate checking for this ILO device? And you can go ahead and click yes. If your workstation is configured to trust your ILO certificates, then you won't encounter this situation. But if you do, the script can handle it by just temporarily ignoring that certificate issue. So we'll go ahead and click yes. And we've established a session. So that's loaded in our session variable right now. So if we go ahead and hammer that out and type in session, we can see that we have created a successful session against that ILO device. And now utilizing this session variable, we can perform a wide range of functions. Again, pretty much anything that you could do in the normal ILO console, you can also perform via the API. So things like shutting off a server, rebooting it, uh, all that type of stuff. And there's a lot of power and flexibility in this API. So definitely take some time to dive into the API documentation and see what you can perform to make your environment better. For this short video demonstration, I'm just gonna do some basic uh, BIOS configuration pulls. Okay, so you notice if we run this line for the HP setting, we get back this API object return, which is a little hard to digest. Primarily what we're concerned with on that return is the content, but this is in JSON format and doesn't exactly have a lot of readability. We can correct this very easily by just loading this into a variable and converting from that JSON. So notice that here I have the BIOS boot settings I'm going to convert from that JSON, and I'm still going to call that same function get HP setting against that session boot and IP. So we have the same command. We're just going to be loading that up and converting it. So if I run this now, and if I pound that out, you can now see that I have the complete BIOS settings return for this device. This is some pretty powerful functionality. It could really allow you to quickly audit your environment and ensure that all the BIOS settings for every single device in your environment match with your specifications. So let's pretend that we're just uh, concerned with these two. Uh, you wanna make sure that network booting is disabled in your environment. Here we can see that these two network cards are set to network boot. And if that's not desired, you could flag this in a easily developed PowerShell script to warn you that that device needs attention. So what did that boot portion mean? Well, I can do another command here where it's exactly the same command, except this time is for the run settings. So HP Gen 9 devices are dual state BIOS, kind of like a switch. Uh, so the boot is the pending uh, settings and the running is the current settings. So you can make changes to your environment via the API, which will only affect the boot portion and those settings won't actually take effect until a server is rebooted. So notice here, I also have a set HP BIOS settings and that does exactly what you think it does. It will push a JSON payload uh, that you'll load up into this variable here and will actually change the BIOS settings on the device that you are specifying in the session. You'll need some basic JSON familiarity in order to accomplish this, but it's relatively straightforward as you can see here. I'll go ahead and declare that no NIC booting JSON. And what I've basically done is in JSON format, I've taken those two NIC boots that we've seen here and where those were set to network boot, I will now set them to disabled. And you can consult, again, the API documentation uh, that you can get access to on the techthoughts.info blog to see what settings are appropriate for your JSON. So I'll go ahead and load up this variable as well as run the set HP BIOS settings. And I'll go ahead and run just that selection. Oh, and I got an error because my variable is not actually named JSON. So I'll just go ahead and change that real quick. And we'll go ahead and run that again. Okay, and we got a true return from that function saying that the, the settings had taken effect. So let's go ahead and go back to the, the boot portion and pull that in again. And if we look at the BIOS boot settings, we can see now that the NIC booting is now disabled because that JSON that we passed to it instructed it to change those settings. But if I run the running config now and take a look at that variable, we can see that it's still set to network boot because the boot settings will not take effect until our reboot. So you can push out changes in mass to your environment uh, to configure your BIOS and not have to worry about that too much until the next reboot. And now that we're done, we'll go ahead and clean up that session. 
this has been a pretty basic example of how to engage the API using PowerShell. I've given you some basic functions that you can get started with on leveraging the API to make some really cool changes in your own environment. I hope you found this video on engaging the API using PowerShell helpful. And don't forget to check out the corresponding write-up on techthoughts.info.